are so revved up this morning for the 35th running of the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. Events have been going on all week leading up to the big race weekend this Saturday and Sunday in Shenley Park. It's the only race of its kind in the United States, and we are so fortunate to have this all-volunteer effort happening right here in our town. Dan Del Bianco is the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix Executive Director, and he is here to run down this weekend's schedule. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Do you feel like a sense of euphoria, like now that it's finally here? Are you are you very stressed out getting ready for the week? Still a little bit of stress. The, okay. the next two days, <laughs> although it all happens this weekend, the next two days is as we set up the golf course, put up the snow fences, bring in Jersey barriers. So as we sit here this morning, there's a lot of work going on. 200 volunteers out there working. And I only ask if you're stressed because you just told me how many vehicles are not only involved in the race, but how many are part of this whole week long of events. So what are we looking at? So we've got uh, about 150 race cars that will be racing in Shenley this weekend, but then there'll be 3000 cars on the golf course wow. as part of the car show. Unbelievable. And I asked you if this was a dumb question before we even started this segment because I didn't know, but what classifies as a vintage car? It started out that 1959 and earlier because that was the definition by the Vintage Sports Car Club of America when they were formed. But it's kind of a sliding scale because you always want to have cars that folks maybe grew up watching or wanting to have that that become the sought after vintage car. So it slides a little, so we're more into the 60s as well. Okay, so we're taking a look now at some of uh, some old video, maybe from last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. um, what can people expect to see if they've never been out to this event? So there'll be cars racing on the track all day Saturday and Sunday, whether it's practice or qualifying or the final races on Sunday afternoon. So there's always action on the track. And then we fill the golf course with, as I said, 3,000 cars, probably 100 sponsor tents. We've got uh, a children's tent. We've got food tents, uh, vendors. And so there's something for everybody. It's still a free event. We, we do ask and solicit donations. A couple of dollars a person to come in is appreciated for our charities because all the money goes to the Autism Society of Pittsburgh and Allegheny Valley School. And you all have been able to raise so many dollars for them. Can you tell us about that? Four and three quarter million dollars since our founding in 1983. And that's always been the underpinning of the event was to raise money for those less fortunate. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, so let's talk about the race itself and uh, what we can expect because this is actually the only street race of its kind in the country. Vintage street Vintage race. Vintage yeah. street so race, there right. are there are others, uh, Formula One and, and IndyCar, right. for instance. But yeah, the only vintage street race in the country and one of only th really two in the world. So we think of race, we think cars are going to go fast. Are they speeding through the city streets or they, is this more of like move, a slow go? No, they move pretty well. Again, these are smaller cars under two liter engines. And so there are some straightaways where they, where they push it to their limits. But I think the average speed around the course is about 60 miles an hour. Wow, look how cool. So where is the best place to watch? Because obviously if you're not in the car, you want to be able to see these things speed past you. So there's vantage points is all, all over the golf course from, from German Hill all the way up to the top of the Serpentine, which is really popular. And, and other folks go even to the Vietnam Veteran uh, Memorial to watch them come up the boulevard. Even Phipps Conservatory is a, is a good vantage. Great. And so new this year is something called the I Gave Donation. So yes. since we're talking about giving and it's free, but that all goes towards the charity. So what is I Give? So the idea I here is, is to help fuel our charities, mm -hmm. put a couple of dollars into the gas cans that our volunteers will be asking for as you enter the park, just to help fund it. It takes a, an incredible amount of money to stage this event, to bring in the snow fence, the, uh, the porta johns, the golf carts, the loudspeaker system, you know, everything that we need, we've got to bring in. Is there a grand prize at the end of all of this? Uh, we have the Hofbrau House Winter Circle on Sunday afternoon, so they get a two liter keg of, uh, of cold Hofbrau House beer. That's, That's not bad. Prize. That's not bad, someone say. And, and this is all volunteer run, so how many volunteers does it take to put on this event? Somewhere north of, uh, of 1,000, probably 1,100 volunteers, wow. and we'll probably get a couple of hundred of new volunteers this weekend. We're, well, that's what I was going to ask. Do you need more volunteers? Are you going to sign something? up? You um, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We always are. They can sign up on the website, and, and we always need help. Okay, great. 
Okay, well, thank you so much for being with us, and this is the 35th year? It is. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. And don't miss the 35th annual Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix. The Speed Race Car Parade and Display is tomorrow night from 6.30 until 8.80 on Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. 8.30? 8.80. 8.30. Yeah, 880 is not a time, is it? Okay, that's me just reading the prompter. That's the problem there, folks. Forbes Avenue and Squirrel Hill. Then Saturday and Sunday is race weekend in Shenley Park with car shows and, of course, the races. You'll find the full schedule of events online. You can look for that at kdka.com slash PTL. Just